Find the integral of sec x dx from the original definition of sec, that is without any foreknowledge of the expected results or the known results, but simply from its original definition as 1 over cos. Mainly to illustrate the techniques of using substitutions and dealing with trig identities to resolve some problem involving trig integrals. So I've got this. I've got sec x dx means 1 over the cosine of x dx. And for that, I could use a substitution. Let u equal sine x. <coughs> that would avoid negatives. So du by dx would be cos x. Or in particular, dx is du over cos x. So that means I've got the integral of 1 over cos x times du over cos x. But if I'm changing variables, everything will have to be expressed, expressed in terms of u. So cos squared x, which is what I've got, can be changed into sines. Because cos squared x plus sine squared makes 1. So cos squared x by 1 minus sine squared x. And sine squared x is u, so that's 1 minus u. So the integral of 1 over 1 minus u squared du. <coughs> the denominator can be factorised. So I could use partial fractions to split that up. So I'm going to let a over 1 plus u plus b over 1 minus u equal this rational expression. So that multiplying throughout, I've got a times 1 minus u plus b times 1 plus u equals 1. Right, if you let u equal 1, that'll get knocked out, and I'll be left with 2b equals 1, so b equals a half. And if I let u equal negative 1, it means that'll get knocked out, and I've got 1 take away negative 1 is 2, so it's the same for a, 2a is 1, so a is a half. So I can rewrite this then. I'm not going to write a half over 1 plus u plus a half over that. I'll take the half right out of it. So I've got a half of 1 over 1 plus u plus 1 over 1 minus u du. A little bit of room here. So they're going to go back to logs. So I've got half of ln 1 plus u plus ln 1 minus u, but for this one, the derivative of that part is negative 1, so this will have to be divided by negative 1. That one was fine. Plus c. But I'm not going to keep putting the c in. That's just going to be a paste. I can go back in the end if you want. So this becomes a half of ln 1 plus u, this being subtracted, over 1 minus u. I was about to put in the plus C, a reflex reaction, but I'm going to resist it. Now I need to put that back the way it was. So that means it was a half of ln, u was equal to sine x, so 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x. Now what can you do with that? Is that the required result? Are we going to make it any neater without having the denominator in it? Well, there's a half of the front there, so I could do a square root. I don't want to do a square root unless I've got squares, unless I can, I can avoid it. But something quite often we've done with denominators where there's parts you don't want is you can multiply it by something that would conveniently remove parts. And in this case, it would be quite handy to multiply the bottom, 1 minus sine x, by 1 plus sine x. Oops. Forming the difference of two squares. Even handier is the fact that that's the same as the top, which means I've now got 1 plus sine x squared ready for that square root. So I've got half of ln, the top's going to be 1 plus sine x squared, and the bottom's going to be the difference of two squares here, so that's 1 squared minus sine squared. Back to that same substitution as that same substitution as before, cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So 1 minus sine squared is going to equal cos squared. So now I've got a half of ln of 1 plus sine x all squared over cos squared x. They're just a paste, aren't they? So I've got, now I can take the square root. The square root of that is going to be 1 
plus sin x over cos x. One step away now, 1 over cos x is sec x, and sine over cos x is tan x. And back you come to finish it off, plus c if you will.